this. What advice uh, would you give to journalists who've been schooled in old-fashioned news reporting yes. style if they wanted to, to write in a more literary fashion? Well, I suppose if you were talking about something like, like length, I mean, you know, in a, in a short form um, newspaper journalism, your key priority is to get information across and get it across quickly in a way that's not confusing and, you know, the kind of adage that you sort of always cut from the bottom when you're cutting a, a, a piece of, uh, of news reporting um, doesn't kind of apply. So you really need, I suppose, to think first and foremost about the structure of something. You need to think how are you going to keep someone interested for four, six, ten thousand words or however long you're writing. Um, and you need to think about the sensibility. Somebody couldn't read, unless you're reading an official report because you have to, you wouldn't read 10,000 words of a piece unless there was something about the voice that was keeping you doing that. Um, so I would say you need to really take your to completely sort of forget not basic reporting principles because they still apply, but you really need to think that the words and the sentences are important now. Um. If you were to recommend uh, some really good uh, narrative non-fiction um, that we could read and study the style and the approach of that, what would you uh, yes. perhaps go for? I mean, Grant is, is very associated with, with Rise Hard Capuchin. Yes, and that would be, I mean, he was just an original and there you sort of had someone who was just determined to kind of witness what was going on and, to, and I would absolutely recommend um, him. I think I would just try to read some. I just try to read some non-fiction. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I actually don't have names off the top of my yes, head. I'm not going to it. But I would um, look at some serious foreign correspondence. Um, I would try to read as widely out of your own area of interest in a way. I wouldn't read something that you knew very much about. Yes. And and just kind of see how it's how it's done. Common errors in stylistics in, 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 mm. on that boundary, that interesting boundary between fiction and non-fiction. Yes, um, common errors. Um, stock phrases, um, I think, uh, cliche, um, repetition, um, and just a kind of what I would, what I think of as just a sort of mimicking of something that you think is successful. Um, and, you know, I was thinking earlier about the memoir genre, for example, which has become incredibly popular. There are some really brilliant literary memoirs um, that have been written in the last 10 or 20 years that are among the best books to have been written. There are now an awful lot of things that are quite like them, but they are not them. So I think this kind of, you just need to be original. Um, and you need to be original in conveying your own sensibility. Um, and I think when somebody is trying to sound like someone else, that is perhaps the most, or not necessarily one person, but they're trying to, they think, now I need to write like this. I think that's, that's, the, that's perhaps the most common error. Uh, last question, if I may. Mm. Very popular with my students is yes. what I would describe as gonzo journalism. Yes. The kind of Hunter S. Thompson performance journalism or performance writing. Yes. Where, where the kind of narrative stars yourself, you know. Yes. You know, I go here, I go there. Yep. What do you think about that type well, of writing? Well, that's sort of back a little bit to, what, to, in a way, what I was saying. It was brilliant, but he did that. Yes. And you need to do something else. Um, putting yourself into um, a narrative is not just a matter of kind of saying, I did this, I did that. It's about your sensibility too. And I think it's... Um, it's something that's approached with caution because you have to be really brilliant at it. But I also think there are a lot of different ways of doing it. And I don't think it's necessary to kind of fight shy of doing it. Bring yourself into something. Tell people how you feel, what you thought, what you saw. Um, but remember that the, the reader doesn't know you and you have to, your voice has to be interesting to them. And, and your voice is what they're getting, not you. They're not going to meet you. But I notice in the current issue you have, you have Andrew Martin. Yes. He's a brilliant writer, I think. Yes. And very, very funny. Yes, and uh, that, that was, I, I enjoyed that piece very much because it was a piece of humour. Um, he, he does this kind of gonzo, very mundane things, like, yes. like going shopping. Yes, exactly. And the piece he's written in the, in the current issue of Grunter is about, is about um, why no one smokes a pipe anymore. It doesn't sound very promising. It's all about him. It's a different kind of thing. It's just, you know, he finds out a lot, actually. Yes. Um, but it's, it's a piece of humorous writing yes. that is nonetheless exceptionally sort of proficient. And, uh, and yes. you're right, that kind of mundane gonzo is a good, that's a, I think you've coined a new.